I will be your next speaker. Once again, my name is Said Abdelal from Agriculture Canada and from Guelph Food Research Center. And this center is one of 19 centers in Canada, belonging to the Department of Agriculture and Agri-Food uh, Canada. That's the Federal Department of Agriculture in Canada. And today, it's a pleasure to share with you some of the data about uh, our barley project. So I will be talking in particular barley-based function foods in health and nutrition. So it's a little shift from genes to food. So I will be in, my presentation includes two parts. In the first part, I will be talking about barley as a function food. And the second part, I will be talking about health benefit of barley. In particular, I will be talking about effect of barley on glycemia and satiety. So in the first part, I will be talking about body characteristic and barley health claim, uh, uh, barley food status, and here I will be talking about glycemia and satiety. So body characteristic. Barley is a common cereal, such as wheat, rice, corn, and it's a good source of beta colocan and we all know beta colocan is a soluble gum or soluble fiber consisting of 1413 glucose residue. Oh, sorry. Also, barley is known, and we know beta colocan has been linked with uh, lowering blood cholesterol and lowering blood glucose as well. And we'll see this uh, uh, later on. Oh. So barley is also known as alloy GI. And we know GI, or glycemic index, describes the relative magnitude of the glycemic responses. Also, we know barley is a rich source of phenolic antioxidants, such as folic acid. And from our uh, previous speaker, we know the relationship between phenols and and health benefits. Also, barley has a long history of food use. As a matter of fact, like uh, barley and wheat, our, civil, <coughs> our, our uh, human uh, uh, civilization was built on barley and wheat as ancient foods. And barley at the present time ranks fifth major crop worldwide. And barley now is available in many assorted form and composition. We do have feed barley, malting barley, food barley, and high amylose barley, waxy barley, regular barley. So it has a variety of compositions and characteristics, which of course can be used in making specialty foods and functional foods, and also that supplement. In terms of barley composition, barley can be considered as starchy food, which contain high level of starch, and also, and also has a reasonable amount of protein. Intermediate amount of soluble uh, 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 fiber, beta glucan Arab Mozailan, also reasonable amount of lipids, mineral, and vitamins. In terms of that fiber, Barley is in the middle compared to, it's lower than rye and triticella in terms of natural fiber, but it is higher than corn, sorghum, rice. So it's about in the middle as wheat. So now, Barry Hills claim. So now there is a body of evidence shows or linking the barley beta colocan with many physiological effects. So as a result of this, now there's a barley health claim. And in Canada, there is a health claim linking barley curcan product to a reduction of blood cholesterol. And the claim is applicable to the Canadian population in which about 40% of Canadian adult has unhealthy level of cholesterol, which of course, can put them at increased risk of heart disease. 
That's right. This health claim allowed in Canada in 2012. Also, in USA, the FDA has allowed a health claim associating consumption of pulp product with reduction of uh, risk of coronary heart disease. And in this claim, the pulp product include or is applicable to pulp products such as pulp flakes, pulp grits, buried barley, and so on. And what it says here, it says, okay, the product uh, should uh, provide at least 0.75 grams of beta colocan or, or soluble fiber per, per serving. In Europe, also there is a barley health claim, and the barley health claim linking barley beta colocans with lowering blood cholesterol, which may reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. And the claim also applicable to the uh, 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 to adults with normal or uh, a slightly elevated blood cholesterol uh, concentration. So we know there is a benefit or health benefit of for barley. So now, do we eat enough barley? That's the question. Like, for example, people in the room, how many of you eat barley? Only two, three, four? Oh, that's, that, that, that's, that's good. But that indicates that there is a lot of work has to be done to eat more barley because it is a potential function food. So, and also, barley now available in many products. You can see barley, bad barley, it's now available in the market. Uh, berry barley, barley flour, barley flakes, grits, and the whole grain barley. So it's, it's, it's available in different uh, forms. So also look at the barley products. There is a variety of barley products. Like you can see, breakfast cereal, we use it in barley. Barley foods, impact products, organic barley available, supplement available, mixed dishes, soups, and barley tea as well. So it is available in a number of products. But the challenge is we should eat enough barley. So if you're looking at the status of barley as a food in, uh, around the globe, in Canada, barley considered as a feed crop with only 83, with 83 of the barley production used as feed. Only 0.1 used as a food. This very, very small amount of barley used as a food in Canada. This is the latest data from FAO. If you look at USA, US is a different. So it depends where you are, you can consider barley as a food or feed or industrial crop. In USA, it's considered as industrial crop and mainly used for food manufacturing. This is the terminology used by the FAO. So about 74. But a reasonable amount of uh, barley produced in USA used as a food, about 4%. In Europe, it's similar to Canada, mainly feet, so in Europe, and uh, a small amount used as food. In Ethiopia, it's another story. I put Ethiopia because in Ethiopia it's interesting because it's mainly food. So in Ethiopia, it's a food crop, not feed. Okay, and zero as a feed. In India, the same as Ethiopia, mainly food. So in India, the Soviets barley mainly used as food. So in overall around the, the group, it is considered as a feed because it's more than 65% used as feed, only about 5% used as food. So as I said, it's still a lot of work need to be done. More offers need to be done to promote barley as a function food. So why <coughs> slowing the process of developing barley as a food? There is a number of factors here. And we'll see. There is lack of international policies to encourage barley use for human food. So basically, we need to do more work in this area to develop more international by international organizations such as WHO and FAO. Also, there is lack of quality parameters. Looking at feed malt, feed barley 
and molting barley, there is a quality standard for each of these barley. But food barley, there is no quality standard. And that's one of the big challenge which slow down the develop, development process. Also, you look around the globe, you will find a limited number of varieties of feed barley and molting barley. But food barley, not too many. That's another factor we need to work on, and lack of quality research of food barley in general. So more research towards barley as a food has to be done. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, effect of barley on glycemia and satiety. And this part of this study done with, in collaboration with the University of Toronto, and it was part of a PhD student. Okay, so clinical studies. So what we done here, we would like to see what's in barley make it low glycemic index. What factors is barley which contribute to the uh, glycemia effect? So we done three clinical studies. In the first cl clinical study, we we were interested to see the effect of bearing on glycemic response and glycemic index. Very soon, I will tell you what bearing means. Okay, and in this study, we use uh, three, uh, uh, three barley cultivars and two fraction, one whole grain and one white bar. So in total, we have uh, six barley foods and 10 healthy uh, subjects were participated in the study with uh, uh, body mass index was around 27.6. So I will come to the second and third clinical trials soon, but just to give you an idea about barley bearing, this is a tech, it's a mill, and Sateki mill used to reduce the barley fraction. So building uh, process is the removal of the outer layer inward. So you took the, the you, you remove the, you remove the hull, okay, if it's hull barley to produce whole grain. And here is the percent of outer layer remover, about, sorry, about this amount, if you remove hull and small portion from the pericarp and testa, you get commercial barley, commercial bearded barley. If you remove larger amount, you get peat barley. If you remove almost hull and most of the pericarp and testa are alone and imperio, you get white bear. So the remover, it can go up to 31 to 34. So we would be interested to know the, the effect of bearing on glycemia and satiety. In the second uh, clinical trial, we'll be interested to investigate effect of barley cartifar and composition. So in this study, we use seven barley cartifars and three fractions. As I explained in the last slide, one commercial, one bug and what bear of uh, barley food. And again, 10 healthy participant with B, a BMI of 26.4. In the third study, we would like to see the effect of processing. So we process barley into pasta to see effect of processing. And we use two barley pastas, one semolina pasta as control. And again, 10 healthy participant with BMI of about 28.3. So that slide shows you the variety of cultivar. They are diverse, two row for the six row, hull versus hullless, and normal versus waxy. For those normal barley, it means it contain normal amount of amylose. So the amylose in the grain about 25% on average. Waxy barley, the amylose content is less than 5%. So that's waxy uh, uh, barley. And this slide shows the, the broad com spectrum of composition in the varieties. If you look at starch from 50 to 66, and amylose from 3% to 31%, beta colocan from 4 to 11%, and soluble fiber. So this to show how diverse 
it was barley cartophar used in the study. So in, so in general, we use two food of barley. The first one, which is boiled kernel barley. So there is minimal processing effect in this case. So whatever we see, it will be belong to the barley. In the second one, we use pasta. And what would be interested to investigate effects of food cooking, processing, food form, starch characteristic, fiber content, beta glucan content on glycemic response, glycemic index, satiety, viscosity, of product and beta colocan beta colocan molecular weight, and beta colocan solubility. The effect of, you're gonna compare barley against white bread, and you're gonna look at uh, uh, differences among barley varieties, okay? And also, you're gonna look at fraction, which whole grain furthers white bear. So, in terms of barley, barley uh, uh, all barley food elicited significantly uh, lower glycemic responses and it has lower glycemic index compared to white bread. If you look here to the mean, here is the glycemic responses as area under curve for barley and compared to white bread and here the GI. And you can see it's a very low GI compared to the bread. And in terms of cartifar, there was significance here among cartifar with this one, CTC fiber. That's waxy barley with high content of beta colocan. It was with, it, it with lower glycemic response and G and GI. In terms of fraction, if you look this again in this, you will see a, a, a slight a, a, a differences. In terms of cartifar effect, in second experiment, in second experiment you will see there was no significant differences among the cartifar, okay? And, and the reason for that perhaps, perhaps it is a small number of participants, participants. Because when we include, when we include whole grain and white bird, we can see significant differences, okay? But if, if you look at, at the GI, you will see all the G, all barley GIs, it's very much significantly different from white bread, and it's very much low compared to white bread. In pasta, in pasta, you will see a, 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 a barley pasta and sumilina pasta has lower glycemic response and glycemic index compared to white bread, but there was no significant differences between uh, barley pasta and Somolina basta. We were also interested to look at the correlation. What's in basta correlate with uh, satiety? And as you can see here, like the glycemic index, there was no significant correlation with amylose, rapidly available glucose, RDS, which rapidly digestion of the starch, and resistant starch. No significant difference. Only we found significant differences with GI and dietary fiber. Here is the R value. And SDS, it depends. If we use horgerin alone, there was no significant difference. If we use horgerin and white bird, we can see significant difference. With SDS, SDS or slowly digestible starch. So conclusion for this study. Cartifar exhibited significant differences in glycemic response by about 30% and GI 10 units. Burning significantly increased glycemic response by to about 20% and GI by about 10 units. Milling and excluding the barley grains into wheat pasta increased GI. The starch digestion fraction did not appear to have a significant impact on the GI. Only to the dietary fibers appears to have an impact on GI. So, barley satiety. 
So if you look at the, if, if you look at the differences between satiety as area under curve, you will see there was significant differences among the Gartofar with Kwarsa and AC Radin. This waxy and this uh, uh, Toro variety, it has significant, it was seemingly different from white bread. The same for GI. In terms of pasta, we don't see significant differences between Bali, Cartifars, and Somolina. But it was significant differences in terms of uh, uh, white bread. If you look at the correlation between uh, satiety index score and palatability, there was significant correlation. But it was no significant correlation between palatability uh, uh, rating and satiety. So conclusion for satiety, boiled barley grains appears to have a limited effect on subject satiety. Burling has no effect on satiety. Food form appears to have an effect on satiety. So it is really important, this social significance of processing to preserve beta colocan physicochemical characteristics. And that is the third part of the study will show you this uh, uh, factor. So now we look to add the physicochemical characteristics of barley and health parameter. So if you look at the cartophar here, you will, you will see the range of beta colocan okay? And as you can see, the waxy has higher amount of beta colocan, which that can explain why these two variety has lower glycemia, okay? Also, if you look at the beta, beta colocan molecular weight, there was a trend for for the mercury weight to be declined on cooking, but there was no statistical differences between the cartophar or after, after cooking. If you look at the uh, uh, soluble beta colocan, it will be significant differences among the cartophar as well, with, again, uh, CDC fiber has, and CDC ratin has a, a higher soluble okay? So viscosity, it will be the same. And viscosity, we measure viscosity of product by RVA, rapid viscous analyzer, and viscosity of beta colocan extract by rheometer. And that's explained. If you look at the viscosity and solubility of beta colocan and content and molecular weight, it can correlate well with the glycemic response and explain why this variety has low glycemic index. That's for BASTA product, we got the same trend. So looking here at the correlation, as I said earlier, the glycemic index significantly correlated with molecular weight, slurry viscosity, and extract viscosity. That's positive correlation, negative correlation with, uh, 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 with, with uh, that's uh, the uh, big, uh, Okay, as this one, it's a blood glucose, uh, yeah, big bad blood glucose, yes, and soluble as well. That's the same. So conclusion for this one, barley cartifars differ in their physical chemical characteristics, and burning had a little effect on physical chemical properties. Food form significantly affected physicochemical parameters and thus its glycemic response and glycemic index. And that's the key finding of how to preserve beta colocan characteristics on processing. That's the key for. So I would like to leave you with barley holds a potential as a function food and source of dietary supplement, such as beta colocan. And barley is a low GI food that can be used in the management of diabetes and obesity. 
Bali food form is crucial in delivering anticipated health effect of Bali. More global efforts are needed to promote Bali as a healthy food. That's the key point of our studies. And with that, I would like to acknowledge my collaborator, my collaborator uh, and uh, my partners and funding agency, graduate students and research technician. And also, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. You showed some data on um, barley physical uh, properties and glycemic index, but most of your subjects for the three studies were overweight in average. Do you think that the results will also be applicable in more obese individuals with higher BMI? It's uh, yeah, good point. It could be, but really, I am a food chemist, so I don't know exactly, but it could be, yes. And also consider the number of subjects as well. Yeah, because it's, a, it's a small. If you like to see more significant, perhaps it's a good to increase the number of subjects. Yeah, but it will be very costly, of course. <laughs> That's one main reason. Yes. It's uh, very interesting that uh, in Canada, barley is used as a feed, not mainly for food. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific reason? It's just culture or, you know, I just wonder. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, one, one of the things, as I mentioned, because uh, it, 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 it's a history, like food use history, that's the tradition. So barley used as a feed, that's one thing. But also, maybe we need to educate people about benefit of barley. And that's what the big challenge, because really there is a variety of barley food in the market now, but many people don't know, and that's something we need to consider, which like educate people about benefit of barley as a food. Thank you. You're welcome. I will just uh, like to comment on that. This is a, a very excellent presentation you have. And I will just comment on that. Uh, in my years uh, practice as a dietitian, I advise a lot of my patients, uh, diabetic patients or the patient for the weight reduction, uh, to consume barley bread or barley food. But unfortunately, the people trend is not changing. And we all, we all have to effort there to change the food or eating behavior of the people. As this is a very good thing, low GI, good for the diabetics, uh, good for the weight maintaining to reduce the weight. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.